Okay. okay, guys, I think it's time to get started. Today, we're focusing on the uh, multiplication skills. I think some of you have learned that before. So today, I uh, will review that. But uh, if that is new for you, you can take some notes for that. Okay, the first method we learn is about rounding method. Okay, so guys, I will give you two calculations. The first one is 99 times 40. And the second one is 100 times 40. So could you please tell me which one is easier to calculate? Kiki? The second one. Guys, a second, sorry. Okay, sorry, just something happened. And let's continue, let's continue, let's continue. Of course, the second one is easier, right? So, um, because the second one, you can get the answer directly, that will be 4,000, right? And actually you can convert the first one into the second one. So how can I convert that, guys? You found that 99 is really close to 100, right? So if I want to use that 100, I have to, I have to use 100 minus what number? So I get a 99. Minus one. Guess you can type your answer in the chat box. Yep, E minus one. Mm -hmm. And then times 40, that's right. So what's gonna be the next step, guys? What's gonna be the next step? You just use the just each 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 term in the bracket times the 40, right? So that will be much easier to do the calculation. So you got a 4,000 take away a 40. So what's your final answer, guys? 3,960, right? Yep. So that's what we mean by rounding method. You just round the number which is really close to a whole number, I mean, a, a perfect number to do the calculation. Sometimes it's 100, sometimes it's 200, sometimes it's uh, like a, a thousand. So that's the thing, that's the logic. And then you have these two practice questions. Yes, I, I will give you two minutes to solve this one first. You tell me, as for the first one, you are going to round 24 or 4.99. You're going to run in the, which one? Yeah, 4.99. And that number is really close to which one? 4.99. is really close to which number? We did this in the test. Yes, that's right. You did this. And we just tell you how to do this fast because I'm not sure if you are using the, the best method to solve it. Okay. It's really close to five. Very good. So for the first one, you have to convert this 24 times 4.9 into five minus what number? 0 0.01. Yep. That's right. And then you have to distribute these two factors 
to 24. So we have to use 24 times by five and minus 24 times 0 0.01. Okay, so you got a 120. Take away 0 0.24. And what'd you get? What'd you get? 119. Point seven six. That's right. That's the answer. And then second one, you're gonna run the first or the second number, guys. Can you give me one or two? Three point nine eight. That's right. That's right. Okay. So you're gonna run that number into what number? into a four, very good. So let's see how to solve the second one. You're gonna keep, just remain this 35 at this place, and you times 3.98, you convert that into a four, and the difference between four and the number we have is 0 0.02. Yep, and then you just repeat what you did for the first question. 35 times by four minus 35 times the 0 0.02. And we know that 35 times by two is 70. 70 times by two is 140. And minus 0 0.7. Guys, type your answer in the chat box. Let me know what you get. Mm -hmm. Easy calculations. It's take away 0 0.7, big couple. You got a 139.3. That's the final answer. Okay. So first method you learned today is called rounding method. Okay. And when are you going to use that? Is when you find some numbers like 49, 59, 99, that is really close to um, multiple of 10 or multiple of 100. Then you're going to use the rounding method. That's it. And then let's move on to the second method. It, it's called number pairs. Okay, sometimes you got some number pairs. You got two numbers. They are really good friends. And when you times them together, you got really perfect number. Okay, so the first pair will be two times Five. And actually, for as for number five, when you times five by any even number, you get a, a perfect number. You get a perfect result. Okay. So the first thing you have to know is that 2.5, you get a 10. Okay. Maybe you can take some notes for this page. And then the next two will be four times what number, guys? What is the friend of number four? Is that still five? Four times what number gives you a hundred? Yeah, it's 25. So the best friend of number four will be 25. And then can anyone tell me what's the best friend of uh, eight? 125, that's right. Because eight times this number gives you a thousand. So that'll be 125. Does anyone know what's the pattern here? What's the pattern? How can we get these three pairs? You'll see that from two to four, you times by two, you just double it. And from five to 25, you times by five, right? And as for the result, you times by 10. And then you just repeat that precise, you get another pair. So from four to eight, you times by two, right? And then from 25 to 125, you times by five again. And the result times by 10. Okay, question. What's gonna be the next pair? Of course, for uh, these three will be the most common one you use in the exam. But if you know the pattern here, can you give me one more pair? C. 
16 times what number? 16, that's right, times 625. That's right, equals to one followed by how many zeros? Four zeros, that's right. One, two, three, four, you got 10,000. And of course you can find some more pairs, but um, that is not very often used in the exam. So just, uh, that's it. Just remember the first three, that's it. Okay, so second one, when you find 37, this number is really a special number because if you find this number and you use that uh, number times by three, you got a really good number. What's that? 37 times by three. Just do the calculations, tell me what you got. You got 101 or 111? Which one is correct? Yep, that's right. You got 111. You got a 111. Okay, question for you. Why should we know this? So when you find 37, this number, and if I give you 37 times by 27, can you just tell me the answer directly? Yeah, I think most of you give me the correct answer. Someone's raising your hand. Eric, what you got, Eric? You get 999. Yeah, I know, right? 999, right? That's yeah. right. Why is that 999? That is because 27 equals to three times by okay. nine and 37 <laughs> times by 27 <laughs> then equals to three times by nine. And then you put these two together, you get a 111. And then times by nine, that's how you get this 999 really fast, right? Okay, I just made up some new question for you. Let's see, 300, uh, I mean, 37 times by um, nine, what you get? If you do 37 times by nine, yeah, you see, you can get the answer really fast, right? Because nine equals to three times by three. And 37 times by three, you got one, one, one. And then times by three, you got a three, three, three. That's it. Okay. And last one. So for this one, just, just for fun. Just for fun. You don't really need to remember this. Uh, if you remember, we, we talked about this before, which is called a number without eight. Still remember that? A number without eight. What does that mean? It means you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then you don't have an eight. You just go to nine. If you use this number times by nine, you got really magic number. Does anyone know what's that number? We call this one a number without without eight. If you use that number times by nine. You got nine up once. So it can be one, 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 comma, one, 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 one. Okay. Space is not enough for me to write the results. Maybe you can write a little bit smaller. One, one, one. Three ones and three more ones. That's it. That's the answer. Okay. Actually, guys, you can, after the class, you can do the calculation and you will find it's really a magic thing. Just, But just for this one, you don't really need to remember that. Just have fun, okay? It's the charm part of the, of the numbers. Okay, guys, now I'd like to use this, uh, this number pass, what we learned to solve some questions. Okay, the first one, 124 times 25. Can anyone tell me you're going to use which pair to solve this question? Who is raising hand? You can just unmute yourself and tell me. 25 times four is a thousand and 125, 124 times a thousand is one twelve thousand four hundred. 
Uh huh. So you got twenty five, right? Yeah. Yeah, and twenty five. What is the spread of twenty five? It's four, because four times twenty five is a hundred. So what is the relationship between one hundred twenty four and four? You can use that divided by four. It's it's a pretty easy calculation, right? So one hundred twenty four divided by four, you got thirty one. So that equals to 31 times by four and times by 25. You put these two together, you get a hundred. So the final answer is just a three, one followed by two zeros. You see, it's pretty fast. Okay, second one, second one. You have this 125. So that means you're gonna use which pair? Eight, that's right, eight. And 96 divided by eight. It's also a very easy calculation, right? So 96 equals to 12 times by eight, and then times by 125. You can put these two together. That gives you a thousand. Then the final answer is 12 followed by three zeros. Okay? So how about the next one? The next one you got is 15 and you got a 72. And actually, you guys, for this one, um, that pair will be five times by two. Five times by two, what does that mean? So you got this, um, or you can just use 15 times by two. It's, it's also very easy. So 15 times by two is 30. And then you times by 36, because two times by 36 equals to, uh, equals to 72, right? So you could put these two together, you got 30 and 30 times 36, it's just the three times 36, you got a 108. And then at the end, you got a one more zero here. So that's why it's 100, I mean, 1080. Can it also be five and 24? Uh, yes, yes, of course. But uh, let's see, is that 72? Oh, because five and 24 is, is not a, a pair number. It's a four and 25, it's not five and 24. So that's why you cannot convert that into five times 24, okay? It's not that perfect. Of course it's 120, but it's, it's not that easy when you do 100. Okay, so next one, it's a 37. So every time you find this 37, you need to use 37 times by three. And you got 33, that equals to uh, 11 times by three, right? And then you times 37. So that equals to 11 times by one, one, and one. So to solve that one, you have two different ways. The first way is that you could uh, split this one into a 10 plus one. So that will be, if you use 10 times this number over here, so that will be this one. And you plus one, one, and one. So you got a uh, 1,221. That's the final answer. All right, that's it for this part. Any questions do you have? Are we all good? Yep. Can you type uh, number eight to me if you understand everything? So far, okay, very nice. And then let's do some more practice here. As for the first one, as for this 13, how can you convert that? Mm -hmm. If you want to use that 37 times by three, you could split this one into a 10 plus three, right? Because that way you're gonna have a three. So let's see, 37 times by 10 plus three, and then you got 37 times by 10. It's pretty easy to get the answer. And then you plus 37 times by three. So you got a 370 plus this one, one, one. So three plus one is four, seven plus one is eight, zero plus one is one. And you get the answer, that's it. And as for the second one, I think all of you still remember the answer, right? We just solved this one. The answer is what number? 999, that's right, 999. And then for, how about the last one? What about the last one? If you do 37 times by 
79. How can we solve this one? 79 is not a multiple of three. 79 cannot be sl split into uh, three plus something, right? Then how can we do that? Yes, Daniel, that's right, guys. Um, the reason why I give you this one is because when you find 37, you don't have only one way to use the, uh, I mean, the calculation skills. Because as for this one, you will find that 30, uh, 79 has nothing to do with, with three, but that is really close to 80. And then you can convert that into 80 minus one. And that then equals to 37 times 80, take away one. And then you have 37 times by 80 and minus 37. So what you have, 37 times by 80, what do you have? What do you get? We can do 37 times by 80. That's right, 2,960. And then you take away that 37. The final answer then equals to 200, I mean, 2,923. Okay, that's it for this page. And then let's continue to the next, to the next topic. It's called find the common factor. Okay, so I can come up with some new questions for you to show you how to, what, what does that mean by find the common factor, right? If you have this question, let's see. I just made this one for you. 37, see, it's really familiar, right? Times by 22. 22 has nothing to do with three. And then you plus 37 again, times by 38. Guys, can you tell me what is that common factor here? What's the common factor? Yeah, that's right, it's 37. So you can extract that out, 37, then that equals the 37 times the, the sum of these two numbers. So that equals to 22 plus 38. Which is also known as 60. <gasps> yeah, 60. 60. And you found 60. It's a multiple of three, right? So 37 times by three times by 20. So that'll be one, one, one times 20. So you get a two, 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 zero. Right? Nice. It's really time saving, right? So if you know all of these things, you can solve that calculations really fast. Makes sense? That's what we call common factor. And then this is the, the question you have in the test today. And we're gonna go through that one by one. When is break? We don't have a break. We just finish this one in 40 minutes. And then you have a long break the whole night. Okay, for the first one, 79 will be our common factor, right? So that equals to 79 times the sum of 62 and 38. And you will find these two numbers add up to a really perfect number, which is 100. So that equals to 79 followed by two zeros. And then the second one, it's pretty obvious that the common factor is 2.6. And then you times by, now you have to be really careful. It's not addition, it's subtraction. So you have to use 91, take away this 41. So you got 50. And that gives you 2.6 times by 50. You guys can you tell me what you get? What's the final answer? Mm -hmm. So actually you could use, you can enlarge this one by 10, reduce this one by 10. So you get a 26 times by five. And then that gives you 130. That's the answer. Okay, how about the third one? I'm gonna leave this one to you. Can you type your answer to me? I will give you one minute. I guess you can just do some mental calculations. It's pretty easy. The first step, 93 will be the common factor. 
Yes, guys, all of you are correct. That will be 9,300. And you just add these two and don't forget, you have to take away one because 93 equals to 93, I mean, times by one, right? So 56 plus 45, I mean, that equals to 101. And you have take away one, you get a hundred, right? It's a hundred. So that equals to 93, zero, zero. But how about the next one? We don't have a common factor. So what should I do? There's no common factors. Yeah, very good. Okay, guys, we can convert that 18 to 36. So that way we're gonna have a common factor. What does that mean? So I just uh, keep this unchanged. 30, uh, 75 times 36, uh, 36, but now I have to take away uh, a 25 times by two, that is 50, right? And then I times by 18. And I'm gonna put this two into the bracket and that gives you 36. And now you will have the common factor with this, which is 36. And then you have 75 minus 25 times this common factor, which is 36. So you're going to have this, uh, I mean, 50 times 36, the final answer then equals to 1,800. Yep. Okay. Using the same method, you can solve the last one. What's the relationship between 56 and 28? It's two times. So you want to get a 56 uh, from 28, you have to times that by two. So this one equals to 69 times 56 plus 31 times by two and then times by 28. And then we're gonna put these two together because that one gives, gives me us 56. And then you have 69 times 56 plus 31 times by 56 and extract these two out. That equals to 56 times by the sum of 69 and 31. And you'll find that is 100. So the final answer is 5,600. That's it. Yeah, it's, re uh, it's really beautiful. Any questions do you have, guys? Are we all good? Can we continue? Okay. And then you have such kind of thing, which is called distributive law. And actually we have already used that. What does that mean? So sometimes you have such kind of question. It will tell you, um, it will tell you some, it's like uh, a complicated multiplication and give you the answer. And you're gonna compare that one with the, the question, with the new questions. How many uh, topics are left? We have one more topics, mm -hmm. but in that topic, you have some more questions. All right, let's continue. Why do you have to take one not 93? What do you mean by that? You mean the previous question? Yeah, and C. Ah, you mean for C, why do I need to take, take one? Do you mean take away one? Yeah, so when you were like taking away um, the one, so um, it was like 93. Um, uh, I was asking why do you have to like take away one, not 93? Oh, so... It's that you see, I have to add one more steps here. Uh, you see 93 times, you see for the first one, you got 93 and this one, you got 93, this one, you got 93, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I need to extract that out. So that equals to 93 times by this. Yeah, I get you need to do 93 times 56 plus 
um, 45, but at the end when you take away the 93, I don't get why you have to like take away one, not 93. Oh, oh, I, I got you. That is because 93 itself equals to 93 times by one. It's now zero. Does it make sense to you? Mm. Okay, I can give you an easy example. You can understand this. So let's do um, two times 101 minus two. How about that? What's the result of this really easy calculation? 200. Yes, it's 200. And if I want to extract out this two, so that equals 200 bracket, 100 and one, and then I need to do what? You need to minus one. Yes, that's why I have to minus one. I cannot just use two times 101. It's, it's not 200. Then you have this 200 times by 100, you get a 200. That's why. Because this one equals to two times by one. Okay. Okay. So, um, so for the 93, you just need to use 93 times by one. Yeah, that's right. Oh, okay. So one more step, we'll go to this place, plus 45 and minus one. So that gives you 93 times 100. Very good question. Any other questions you have? Nope. Okay. Now let's go back to this page. Mm -hmm. Anyone got a question? Nope. Okay. So as for this one, you have to compare these two multipliers. Can anyone tell me what's the difference? What's the difference here? It's 313, it's not 12, right? So how can I use the result of this calculation to get the result of this one fast? In other words, 313 equals to 312. And after that, you have to do what kind of calculation to get this 313? You have to plus one. That's right. And then you times by 43. So, and now we have to remove the bracket. Then you have 312 times by 43 minus, I mean, plus one times by 43. So you plus 43 itself. And as for this part, we have already know the answer. We don't need to do the calculation by ourselves, right? So that is one, three, four, one, six, and it plus 43. That is much easier when you do the calculations directly, right? So 43 plus 16, you got this uh, 59, and you just keep 134 itself here. It's just a plus 43, right? And that's the answer. Okay, second one, second one. I'm gonna leave this one to you. What's the first step? You're gonna, com you're gonna compare this number and this number. So question, how can you get 311 from 312. This time you have to plus or take away one. Yes, it's a negative one, it's take away one. And then you times 43 again. Now the same steps, you just use the number in the, I mean, each term in the bracket times by 43 respectively. So th 312 times by 43, take away 43. And then you know that this part, you have already know that is one, three, four, one, six, and then you take away that 43. What do you get, guys? Mm -hmm. Six, take away three, you get a three. One minus four is not enough, so you have to borrow one from this digit. So it's gonna be 11 minus four, you get a seven. And then because four, borrow one to the next digit, so that can't become the three. So the final answer is 13373. Okay, are you with me? Good. Now let's move on to the third one. 
312 times by 42. How can you get this one? Now you'll find that this is now changed, but 43 is changed into 42. So you just need to change 43, I mean 42 into a 43 minus one, right? And that will be three, one, two times 43. And this one, you know that number. And now you have to take away one times by this number. So basically you take away 312. So the answer will be one, three, four, one, six, minus three, one, two. So six minus two, you get a four. One minus one is zero. Four minus three is one. So the final answer is one, three, one, oh, four. Okay, last question. 312 times by 44 this time. And you'll find that 44 equals to 43 plus one. Okay. And let me finish this one quickly. I think all of you understand this. I need plus 312. So that'll be one, three, four, one, six, plus 312. So the final answer will be one, three, seven, two, eight. That's it. Okay, guys, so you can tap seven to me if you think we can continue. Okay, very good. Now you do have these two practice questions. Okay, I will give you some time. Let's see, two minutes, how about two minutes? Just solve this two and tap your answer to me. Okay, seven, seven is not, uh, it is already enough. Can you tap the answer to me of this two? Who got the answer? Okay, I got some answers for the first one. That is correct. Does anyone got the answer for the second one? Okay, Michelle, that's good. Steven, good. Kai, and all right, time is up. So for the first one, you see that these two numbers are the same. So just keep that here. And then you times, you want to use this number, right? So 764 is one more than this one. So you can convert that into a 763 plus one. And then you just remove the bracket. So that equals to five, six, eight times seven, six, three. And as for this whole part, you know the number, and it plus one times five, six, eight, right? So that convert into four, three, 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 eight, four, plus five, six, eight. And the final answer you get will be four, three, three, nine, five, and two. Okay. And as for the second one, this time, 763 is the multiplier that are now changed. And then you're going to convert this one. And the first one then equals to five, six, eight, minus one, right? This part equals to 767. And then you times by seven, six, three. So let's, let's repeat this. Five, six, eight times by seven, six, three in the bracket, okay? Minus one times seven, six, three. So that'll be three, I mean, four, three, 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 eight, four, minus seven, six, three. And the final answer you got will be four, three, two, 
six to one. You will see that you're gonna save you a lot of, uh, a lot of time uh, when you do uh, this distributive law, then you just multiply these two numbers directly, okay? That's one of the multiplication skills you learned today. And then let's move on to the last topic, which is called multiplicative properties. Mm -hmm. What does that mean, guys? I think all of you know that before. And as for this one, so such kind of questions, you will be given this result of some multiplication that is, it looks like, uh, it looks complicated. And then you have some new questions to solve based on that. So let's convert this two. I mean, let's compare the first two. So you see that for the first multiplier, you just times by 10. And for the second one, you never change that. So the answer will be enlarged by 10 as well. And you can get the answer really fast is just copy this down and add one more zero at the end. But how about the second one? As for the second one, you will see that as for the first multiplier, you, you just reduce that by a thousand. So you divide by a thousand, right? And then as for the second one, you times by 10. So in total, if you divide by a thousand and then you times by 10, so that means you divide by a hundred, right? So as for the final result, you have to divide by a hundred. And then you just remove, I mean, you move the, the decimal point left by two position. So you got a three, six, three point one two. And how about the last one? As for the last one, the first multiplier, you divide by a hundred. And for the second one, you divide by a hundred again. And that means as for the result, you have to divide by 10,000. If you wanna divide by 10,000, you have to move the decimal point left by four, four places. One, two, three, and four. So the answer you got will be 3.6312. Yep. Okay, let's move on to the second column. As for the second column, you got 356. The first one is now changed, but for the second number, you just times that by two. Then the final answer should be times by two. And you will find this number is, is very easy when you times it by two, right? So 36 times by two, you get 72. And three times by two, six. One times by two is two. Two times by two, you get four. That's it. And then let's move on to the second one. As for the second one, you see that, let me copy down the, the original calculation here. As for the first multiplier, you times by two. And the second multiplier, you divide by two. That means the answer will never change. Okay, so three, six, three, one, two, the answer. And then the last one, let me copy, uh, copy it down again. Three, five, six times by 102. That's the original one. And for the first multiplier, you, you times by two. The second multiplier, you times by 10. Yes. Is that means the final answer should be times by 20. And four GX. Okay. Yeah, so the answer will be seven, two, six, two, four. That's the number you times it by two. But now this time you times by four. I mean, you times by 20. So you have to add one more zero at the end. It's fair. But Jane, the other Jane says is, is not fair because the cut of rest. This is so. Yes, are we all good? Okay, let's move on to questions that you have into this uh, practice questions. So given that seven, uh, 68 times by 74 equals to this number, on the, uh, answer the followings. And for the first one, you see it's just a, a conversion from uh, multiplication to a division. And this is uh, the product. And now it's the, it's the dividend. And then you have this multiplier, so that's the divisor, and the quotient will be 68. Okay. And how about the second one? 
you see that you got a 37. We don't have a 37 of these two numbers, but what you know is that you have to find the relationship between 37 with 74 or with 68. And you find that if I times the, uh, 37 by two, I will have this um, 74. So how can I solve this one? I just convert this multiplication into division first. So I divide by 74. I know that is 68. And then you have to compare this one, this one. The dividend now changed, but the divisor from 74 to 37, it, it just half it. And what you have to know is that as for the quotient and the, and the divisor, the change, the way that they change will be inverse when you never change the, the quotient, right? So the answer should be enlarged by two times. So 608, I mean, uh, 68 times by two, you got a 136. That's it for this one. And then the next one, I think the next one is pretty easy. If you uh, just compare B and C, the same quotient, and here you got 136, uh, 36, and you, now you just divide by 136, you will know that the answer will be 37. Okay, then how about the last one? As for the last one, when you compare this quotient and the original one, let's see this one or this one. Because uh, as for B, C, the, the divisor are the same. So let's compare this two, B and C. From 5,000, this thing to 15,000, you'll see that it's just times by three, right? As for this one, you times by three and you never change the, the divisor. That means the result should times by three as well. And when you do 136 times by three, you got this 408. Okay, so let's let's make some conclusion here. Um, when you have a division, the way that change of the, the dividend will be the same of the quotient when the divisor is now changed. But let's see when the dividend uh, remain the same and the quotient and the, the change of the quotient and change of the, the divisor will be inverse, will be the inverse way. That's what you have to know. And then let's see these questions. I think that's the last page of today's questions. How can we solve this question, guys? As for the first one, you have to convert this original multiplication into what kind of a uh, form? 8084 divided by 94 equals to 86, right? And you will find that as for the divisor is 94 and it's 94, but for the dividend, it just reduced by I mean, 100 times, so you divide by 100, right? And we know that as for the dividend and the quotient will be the same change. So that will be divided by 100 as well. So you got a 0 0.86. Okay, I'm going to leave the second one to you. One minute or just 30 seconds. Can you type your answer to me? What? is the answer for the second one. Okay, I think most of you get the correct answers. Just a few of you make a mistake. So for this one, you have to be really careful when you can't the movement of the decimal point. Okay, let's see. Let's see the second one. As for the second one, you will see that it's divided by 86. So you're gonna write 
the, the multiplication into this way, 8,084 divided by 86, and you know that should be 94, right? And now what happened? One, two, three, right? The decimal point move left by three positions. That means you divide this dividend by a thousand. And that means the quotient will be divided by a thousand as well. And let's see, this is decimal point here. So one position, two position, three positions. So this will be the decimal point and that at this place you have to add one more zero. So the answer will be 0 0.094. Mm -hmm. Okay, last one. What's the answer of the last one? So for the last one, you'll see that it's, it's not 8,000, it's not eight something. And also it's not 86, it's 43. Then what should we do? Actually, we can do this step by step. Yes, someone is raising your hand. Can you tell us how to solve this one? Um. So. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. We can see that both of the um eighty. I mean, 8,084 has been halved and has been put a decimal place. Yeah. And also 86 has also been halved. So that means we have to half 94. Do we need to half 94? I can show you one more, uh, one example here. If you do four divided by two, you will see that is two, right? If I half the four, I will get a two. If I half two, I get a one. Oh, what so you that would be. You'll so find you don't the have answer will never change. Yeah, so that means you don't have to make that. Uh, you don't have to half the ninety-four. You can leave the ninety-four. Yeah. Um, so first step, that's half it. And because so, of the decimal place in the um, four hundred and four point two, we have to put that many decimal places in ninety-four, which means one decimal place in ninety-four is nine point four. That's very good. That's the answer. So first step, you will see that um, the reason why the quotient will never change is that, you know, for the dividend, the change keep the same as the quotient, but for the divisor, it's, it's, it's inverse. So that means for the quotient, first you half it, and then you just uh, you double it, and then you go back to 94 itself again, okay? And then we have one more step here because this one you have to divide it by 10 and 43, you, you don't change it. And that's why you have to move the decimal point left by one position. So you get 9.4, that's it. Okay, guys, that's all for today, for the first day. Any questions do you have? Nope. Not at all. Okay. No. Thank so you. So happy new year again. And I think happy new year. No. Happy new year. Happy new year. Happy new year. Bye. 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 I'll see you in the spring course. Bye. Bye, okay. bye. bye bye. Have a good night. Bye. 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 See you tomorrow bye. at the same time.